Running, if she doesn't, uh, she doesn't take any nonsense. So now that's what, the, in a sense, that when she's that as as the guru, right? Just like the guru shouldn't take nonsense from the disciple, Radharani doesn't take nonsense from Krishna if he's not true to love. If he's not true to the ideal of love, if he's not, if he's not, you know. Uh, living up to the highest ideal of love, then Rajrani takes him down the path. And that's the thing, I, and I say for, for, to women of the world, I say to the women of the world also, I mean, it's tough, but don't take no guff. But it's not a masculine energy that she's using. It's, that's definitely it's, not a masculine energy. Feminine. That's very definitely a feminine energy. That's her feminine power. Because she knows in her, her power is that she knows the power of love. And she knows that ultimately that she, that through her love, that actually that, that Krishna is dependent on her love. And that gives her power over him. But she doesn't misuse that power. She uses that power to purify his love. And that's how she's his guru. I have one more question. Okay. <laughs> Looks like today what was a smart question. In India, when Bhagavatam appeared, because uh, in the Indology they say maybe 1,400, 1,600 years ago, first scriptures of the, 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 the as but far as I know, Krishna Leela inside. So yeah. When well, you can see because if you look, you know, the thing about it is, is that we know, we know, we can, you can just, you see, if you look at, you know, the game telephone. You know this game telephone. Some believe very strictly in 5,000 yeah, years yeah. ago, and some say, "Oh, maybe." It's Just let me talk, tell you a little bit about the method, uh -huh. okay? The method. You know the game telephone. Like if I whisper in your ear, I say a sentence, yes. and then you whisper what you heard, and then you whisper uh -huh. what you heard, and, and we go around. And we have a parampara. <laughs> now, if we we can analyze that by you know, where the changes happened, what the, 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 there were changes that happened, we started out with one sentence and we end up with something completely different, right? Now, it doesn't happen quite that way, but still, there's a, a progression. We can analyze the progression, you know, that if I take, let's say, for instance, two or three different points on the line, I can see that there were two, that this, this is where things were going wrong, or this is where things were going, or this is where things were being changed. Now, <coughs> stories, if you understand anything about oral tradition, just even in your own life, oral tradition, the people are changing. Somebody, I'm telling a story. Now I don't remember the story. I was telling, which I tell, I was telling the story of the Chandrasekhar's play. Now I, I can go back and look it up, you know, and see exactly what I, what, what, you know, the research I did and what. I didn't remember it exactly. You see. So if I tell that story, now if I decide I'm going to embellish on the story, I want to make a lesson out of it, right? So I have a little particular point on there. I'm not really trying to convey information. I'm trying to convey an, a lesson. I'm trying, to conf I'm trying to communicate some particular point. Then I will, you know, embellish the story according to that way. If I'm a, if I'm a professional storyteller, that's my business. I have to keep my audience you know, I have to keep my audience, uh, their attention. I embellish the story. I make the moral more, more strong. Whatever moral I want to take out of it. So if you look at the, if you look at the Vedic scriptures, you'll see the same story coming up again and again. I'm not talking just about Krishna Leela. I'm talking about all the stories that are in the Upanishads and, the, and in the Vedanta. And the, sometimes they're in the Veda and there's in the old Puranas and the Brahmanas. They come in different texts. And in each place, you know, maybe some other significant moral will be taken out of it, you know. So that provides for, for research, it provides a very interesting analysis because you see how people are changing things, how, how somebody changes things for to either to serve a particular purpose or just to tell a better story. You know, like in Katasarit Sagara, this is just for the purpose basically of telling a better story. Mahabharata tells and then you have... So in, in Krishna Leela, you have the history of Krishna Leela starts with what? It starts with Mahabharata, mm. you know? And then, because uh, we don't have any stories of Krishna before Mahabharata. So Mahabharata, we know, is the older text. Mahabharata was an oral transmitted text until it was, con you know, put into writing. And so now the writing, when, the, when, the, when parts of it were written, when the whole thing <coughs> was written, it was written over a period of time. 
you know, we still don't know the exact, can't give an exact date to the Mahabharata. But then the Harivansha is written after the Mahabharata, we know that. So the Harivansha is written after Mahabharata, maybe, you know, three, four hundred AD. So the Harivansha is the first telling of Krishna's story, including all the leelas that, you know, we know. You know, Putana is there, Kaliya is there, Govardhan Taran is there, the Ras Lila is there, very short. So now, this is the point. The Rasa Lila in the Harivansha is only, I think, 18 verses or 17 verses. So it just tells the whole story of the Rasa Lila, and that's the only story, that's the only Gopi part that's there. Then the next section, you've got the Vishnu Purana. So now the Vishnu Purana has a few more demons, Krishna kills a few more demons, and there's a little bit more, you know, more, a little bit more Vrindavan Lila, a little bit larger Gopi section, like that. Then you come to the Bhagavata Purana, and the Gopi section is much, much greater. And some other parts, so you, you can see a development. And then not only that, but the, Mahab the, the Bhagavatam has, shows the influence of South Indian Alvar's writings. The one scholar made a very, very good book called Viraha Bhakti, in which he shows all the influences of the South Indian Alvar saints, and what their, their poems and so on, how they're exactly replicated in the Sanskrit of the Bhagavata Purana. So now you can say, which, you know, we might argue that one came first, the other one came first, like that. But uh, if, you, if you look at, you know, you have the, you have the basic structure is there in, in Harivansha, the basic structure is expanded in, Har, in, in Vishnu Purana, and then that structure is also further expanded in the Bhagavata Purana with the additions of the Alvars. Right? And so now that's the basic evolution of Krishna's story. So you know that the, the Bhagavata Purana is coming after the Alvars. So the Alvars are dated to the, the last of the Alvars is, is, the, the, is, whose presence can be detected in the, in the Bhagavata Purana is the 7th century, 8th century. So 8th century, so the 8th century is the, the what you call the, 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 the earliest possible date of the Bhagavata. Which, uh, which date it was? Yeah, Kula Shekhar is around, uh, I think, I'm, I'm not really, around that time, 8th century. Yeah, so Kula Shekhar and so on, <laughs> but, but some of the Elbars came there after the Bhagavatam also. But I mean, this is, this is a, and then you have, and then you have the Gita Govinda, like I was just saying, now Gita Govinda, you, something new in the Gita Govinda. First of all, Radharani is being apotheosized. Radharani is taken to a position of, of greatness, and then this whole idea of Krishna surrendering to Radha that comes in the, in the Gita Govinda, and then you have you know then you have Chandidas and Vidyapati and these other people are coming along, and they're telling their own version of Radha and Krishna Lila according to their particular vision. And then Rupa Goswami he says, okay, this is good, this is good, this is good, this is not so good. But there's some things he doesn't like about Chandidas. He doesn't say, I don't like Chandidas. But he's, you know, you can tell, if he cuts something out, you know, he says, I'm not going to tell this part. This part I don't like. Or this part I do like. So these things, are, you know, they take this. The outline of the story from Chandidas is there. A lot, the mood, a lot of the mood from Chandidas is kept. But Krishna's nastiness is not kept. There's, a, there's an element in Chandidas of Krishna that's really and it's not so nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, that's right. So he wants, that's exactly right. So, so Rupa Goswami wants to uh, make sure that Krishna being Rasika Shekhar, that Krishna being the supreme Rasik, that he doesn't act in a way that is inimical or contrary to Rasa. So he's saying that Chandidas has, has expressed a, a lot of rasa in his text, in his book. You know? Otherwise, why was he so popular as a, as a performer? But, but Rupa Goswami says, but some of it is not suitable for the Supreme Person, for the Rasika Shekhar. We don't allow, we, can't, we cannot accept. It's always because, you know, we have, I think, a kind of an instinctual concept of rasa. You see? 
you can kind of say if, if Krishna behaves, is, you know, this is why sometimes there's a problem. Krishna stole, and, or Krishna, you know, mistreated somebody, or he lied, and things like this. When, when we hear these kind of things, then there's a there's a problem, and they need to be resolved. Right? Okay, let's leave it there today. Phew. Understanding something? <coughs> English is improving? Get some translator? No translator today? Anyway, you just sit there and every few minutes you hear Radha, you hear Krishna, you hear Chaitanya. <laughs>
for it. That was one hour and 33 minutes. <coughs> yeah? That's a long time. Only. <laughs> yeah, 43 minutes. Yeah, I was the expert. 43. Yeah. I'm oh, really surprised. Yeah.